below. Welcome to Sand and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I am doing a book review of Impact Winter by Travis Beecham, which came out in 2022 on Audible. So this is a sci-fi post-apocalyptic vampire story, and it's only available on audiobook because it's not really a book, as I'll get into. <laughs> there are also no spoilers in this review. So Impact Winter is not a novel in audiobook form, but a like radio drama. As such, we're not given narration aside from some journal entries here and there. And all the story is told via dialogue with some cool sound effects. I'm not sure it like counts as a book, but I don't know what it means to count as a book. So who knows? So what is the story about? <laughs> They came after the impact and the firestorms, when the sun went down like they'd been there all along, just waiting. From executive producers of The Walking Dead and Travis Beach and the writer of Pacific Rim comes a heart-stopping audible original featuring a brilliant British cast. It's the near future in seven years since a comet hit the earth and blotted out the sun. The world is a dark, frozen landscape. And then beastly creatures emerge and take over. Can they really be vampires? In the British countryside, a band of survivors forms a resistance in the fallout shelter of a medieval castle. Darcy is a battle-tested vampire vampire hunter who was at the front line leading the charge to save humanity. Meanwhile, her younger sister Hope wants to wants life to return to normal so she can go above ground and know what it's like to live again. And she just might be willing to risk it all. Before I get into the actual book itself, did the format, this narr you know, audio drama work for me? It, it did, but there are some limitations to it. <laughs> so the book or the story was not hard to follow and the characters were easy to tell apart, at least for me, once you got into it. At the start, it was kind of hard to kind of tell some of the female actors apart, but then eventually you recognize their cadence and everything. Anyway, and I did enjoy the book. It was really fun. I did miss, though, the narrative craft elements of, this, of a novel. You know, part of why I'm addicted to reading is the beauty of language, you know, of description. With this audio drama format, I had trouble picturing what things looked like or what was happening in a specific sense. I could tell someone was hurt by their, you know, their voice or the sound effects that, that were provided, but I couldn't see it in the same way as I would if I was reading. I mean, the sound effects were fine. When I was listening on my headphones, they were actually pretty cool because it kind of goes around, you know, like you think there's a monster behind you and stuff like that. But I didn't listen to it in the car in case of scaring someone like completely shitless outside the window when vampire screeching rang out. As I said, I did like the sound effects, though. They added to the tone and the ambiance. There were musical interludes that I didn't really care for, but I didn't like hate them. Would I start listening to more audio drama on the regular? I don't think so. I don't think I'd seek out another audio drama unless it was like a dialogue based one, you know, like a Samuel Beckett play or something like that. But I will probably continue with the story of this particular world as long as it's free on Audible <laughs> or like, you know, <laughs> I have uh, I have some extra credits or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was as an experiment, I guess maybe they're dipping their toe to see if people were interested in this. I'd say it was successful. It wasn't like my favorite form of, of, of absorbing a story, but I definitely thought it was fun. It was also short. It was only five hours, so it wasn't a big deal. So. When it comes to the story itself, I liked it. It's a vampire story more than a post-apocalyptic one. And while this one still retained a lot of the tropes and concepts we know and understand from vampire lore, it brought a few new aspects or at least blended some from various different books and shows. If I had to compare it to anything, it would be 30 Days of Night, that movie from like 15 years ago. I don't know if any of you have seen it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I really like that movie. In terms of overall story, Impact Winter moved quickly. There were some moments I wished had been in typical book format, such as the relationship between Rook and Darcy. So to draw out some tension there, you know, because that's one thing I don't think, I mean, I think you could have added a lot more sexual tension into certain scenes, but it didn't really happen in this book. And maybe that was just a choice. They didn't want to focus on that, but I could have dealt with a little bit more. Uh, I really liked that it was a story about two sisters, one coming of age and then other learning to let go. These things were relatable and carried through the story in a way that made sense. It kind of tied everything together. They both had like a journey that they processed. I liked both of their story arcs. And while I expected a few of the plot twists that happened, there was one that went a different way that I anticipated. And that, that was that was fun. The characters... The characters themselves were likable, but despite having clear motivations and arcs, they weren't that deep. This is because we rarely saw into their heads and most of their backstory was in small snippets of journals of anything at all. You know, they felt a little bit generic, but then again, we don't always need to have psychological profiles of every character and every piece of media we consume. Uh, they serve their purpose and I liked them. So that's good. <laughs> the voice acting in the audio drama, though, is absolutely fantastic. It's superb. The only other one I found comparable was A History of What Comes Next by Sylvain Nouvelle, which also had a multi-voice cast. The one thing I'll say about the story of this 
story <laughs> is that the setting is kind of meh. <laughs> it's a basic post-apocalyptic concept, but we aren't given a lot of backstory into how the people survive. You know, all the stuff that we post-apocalyptic fans really like. Like, how do they have that much that much storage in the castle for seven years? How many how were people how many people were turned into vampires? How many survivors were there after the comet crash? You know, it's honestly not clear. None of that is fleshed out, and it kind of annoyed me. If it was a book, it would have given us a few paragraphs or thrown in details here and there so we could get a picture of it. A movie would have shown it very easily. This gave us almost nothing and I found that a little bit disappointing because it's marketed as a post-apocalyptic book and you didn't give us a lot of the post-apocalyptic. It's just the basic setting and the vampires are the star and that's fine but then market it as a vampire book. <laughs> I really liked it for what it was though. It's fun. The story is quick paced. The vampire, you know, vampire fans will really like it. And it's, it's not a, but it's not a book. And does that matter? I don't think so. I don't know. You tell me. Uh, yeah. So if you have, it's free on Audible right now, if you have an Audible subscription. So if you have five hours and you like vampires, I think you should check it out. And yeah. Thanks. <laughs>